When you switch on a light, how do you feel? Every time I switch on a light, it works. I'm grateful I have electricity whenever I want it. But I also feel disappointed. This is because where I live, most of the electricity comes from burning fossil fuels. Coal, mostly. As someone that cares deeply about climate change and the environment, this is concerning. Have you ever stopped to think about where your electricity comes from? In some parts of the world, a person can turn on all the lights in their house and the climate change impact would be similar to me turning on a single light. This is because their electricity is coming from low carbon sources, not from burning fossil fuels. Right now, the two leading sources of low carbon electricity in the world are, can you guess? They are number one, hydropower, and number two, nuclear power. According to the BP Statistical Review of World Energy 2020, about 70% of the world's low carbon electricity is made from hydropower and nuclear power. The remainder is from renewable technologies, wind, solar, and others. Hydropower is a fantastic technology, especially in places where there's lots of water, like Tasmania. Australia in general is very, very dry. There's not much water to go around. It isn't an option for many parts of Australia. How about nuclear power? Countries like the United Kingdom, France, Canada, and the United States all use nuclear to make some of their electricity. Australia doesn't have any nuclear power, but that could change in the future. Just imagine for a second that Australia decided to use nuclear power to make some of its electricity. I know exactly what you're thinking. If we developed nuclear power, would Australians start to glow in the dark? I've been working in the field of nuclear science and technology for over a decade. I talk to people that work at nuclear power plants. They don't glow. I also talk to people that don't work in nuclear, and sometimes people tell me that they think nuclear power is an old and outdated technology. This couldn't be further from the truth. The reality is the nuclear industry is evolving and innovating, and I've seen this transformation with my own eyes. I'm excited by what's happening around the world right now in terms of new nuclear power technologies, and I'm even more excited by what's planned for the future. Today, I want to take you on a journey. I want to show you how some of these nuclear power innovations work with the help of chocolate. This brand was on sale last week, so we'll use it today, but any brand works. First, what is nuclear power? Let's compare it to a chocolate bar. This chocolate bar is made up of the chocolate and the wrapper. The chocolate is like nuclear fuel, which is made of uranium. Just a reminder that it is never a good idea to eat uranium. But for the purposes of understanding nuclear power, pretend the chocolate is uranium. The wrapper is like the largest structure that holds the uranium together. If you put a whole heap of chocolate bars, nuclear fuel together, with some other components, you have yourself a nuclear reactor. Nuclear power is the energy that comes from a nuclear reactor. Nuclear reactors can either be running or switched off. So what happens when a nuclear reactor is running? The uranium atoms within the fuel, the chocolate, start splitting, and this creates heat. But we don't want our chocolate to melt. We want to be able to eat solid chocolate, not melted chocolate. Keeping chocolate nice and solid is also important for the safety of reactors. The uranium atoms split, this makes heat, but we don't want the chocolate to melt, so what do we do? We run some cool water past the chocolate bars. As the cool water meets the hot chocolate bars, it takes the heat away and cools the chocolate down. The now hot water goes off and makes steam. This steam turns a turbine and voila, electricity. 
Unlike some other forms of low carbon electricity, what's really, really amazing about nuclear power is that nuclear reactors can operate continuously for many months or even years at a time, and all with zero carbon emissions. That's right, zero carbon emissions. We've talked about what happens when a nuclear reactor is running. How about when it's been switched off? When they're switched off, the reactors continue to generate heat, so they still need to be cooled with water. Not forever, just until the chocolate is cool enough to no longer need the water. So that's how nuclear reactors work. The design of both the nuclear fuel and the cooling is really important. So how exactly is the nuclear industry innovating in the areas of fuel and cooling? Let's begin with the past. Most of the hundreds of reactors in use today were designed and constructed between the 1960s to the 1990s, when I was young. When I started visiting nuclear power plants about a decade ago, this was the type of reactor I was seeing. One characteristic of these reactors from the 20th century is they keep the fuel cool after the reactor's been switched off by using pumps to circulate the water. This would be similar to you leaving a chocolate bar in your car on a hot summer's day and using the car's air conditioning to keep the chocolate cool. If the air conditioner stops working or someone turns off the car, there could be a messy melted chocolate bar incident. I'm sure most of you have experienced what happens to chocolate that's been left in a hot car. These types of reactors from the 20th century that pump water for cooling have very, very reliable cooling systems that are tested frequently. Nevertheless, nuclear professionals are always looking for ways to further improve nuclear reactors. Are reactors from the 20th century safe, you might ask? For example, if you go to the Our World in Data website and search for what are the safest and cleanest sources of energy, you may be surprised where nuclear power ranks. Safety statistics for nuclear power are way better than for fossil fuels and similar to those for other low carbon electricity sources. You may also be surprised to learn that many countries are choosing to make their 20th century nuclear reactors operate for longer than originally planned. This is because using existing nuclear plants for longer is one of the most affordable ways to provide safe and reliable electricity with zero carbon emissions. So, nuclear power from the 20th century already performs well in terms of safety. This doesn't mean that improvements should not be investigated. And this is exactly what's happening. In recent years, my nuclear passion has taken me to see a new kind of reactor. For these new reactors, once they're turned off, the air conditioning kicks in. But if something happens to the air conditioning, there's a backup system. This backup system doesn't need people and it doesn't need to be powered. It involves circulating water without pumps. No pumps required. It's a bit like using an esky packed with ice to keep your chocolate cool for days in a hot car while the air conditioning is being turned back on. Many of the 50 or so reactors under construction today and the hundreds more planned or proposed fit this category. Should there be a problem with the cooling system, the unpowered backup system will maintain solid chocolate for much longer. Great innovation. But what about the future? What innovations are under development? Imagine if there was a kind of chocolate that could survive hotter temperatures than the more traditional kind of chocolate. This would mean the chocolate would survive on hotter days. This kind of chocolate, nuclear fuel, should be deployed in the near future. But wait, there's more. Imagine if you could leave the chocolate in a car and no matter how hot it got, it still wouldn't melt into a pile of liquid mush. The next generation of nuclear fuel is being designed to tolerate extreme conditions. This means much less melted chocolate. These aren't the only innovations taking place in the nuclear industry, there's lots more examples. One that's really relevant to Australia is the introduction of 
smaller models. Small reactors are like the fun sized chocolates of the reactor world. These small reactors will be suitable for things like remote communities, mine sites, and the Australian electricity grid. And there's a lot that nuclear power can do beyond just making electricity. Things like producing fresh water from salt water and making hydrogen. Nuclear can help to limit carbon emissions in many areas. This is why current and emerging reactors are being embraced by many countries as part of their climate change goals. Ask yourself, is nuclear power old and outdated? Or is nuclear power full of innovation and a technology that could benefit Australia? Our electricity doesn't need to be made from fossil fuels. We can use a range of low carbon technologies like hydro, nuclear, wind and solar. Every time you switch on a light or crack open a bar of chocolate, think of nuclear power and its potential to help decarbonize the world. Or better yet, jump online to learn more about the new and emerging nuclear power technologies. There is so much to learn. Make sure you indulge in some delicious, decadent uranium. I mean chocolate at the same time.